Good evening viewers. My name is Inam Sheikh and you are watching my YouTube channel with the name of Inam Sheikh. I'll request you to subscribe my channel and push the bell icon button so that you can get the latest updates. Uh, today for the international viewers I'm doing this in English because I want that uh, the misconceptions if any they should be removed regarding uh, the Muslims and the Jews. What I have heard is that uh, Israel is making a lot of deals with India, a lot of military deals, a lot of other civilian deals. If I look into the scenario of religion, I mean uh, the Jews and the Hindus, they don't have any sort of similarities. The Jews, they eat halal food, the Muslims eat halal food. The Jews, they pray, the Muslims pray. We believe, the Muslims, we believe that uh, Jews uh, it, it, this is a religion and we also believe that your book is a holy book. Hindus don't believe that. Hindus believe in lot of gods while we believe in one god. We don't believe in lot of gods. And uh, obviously there are so many other factors, so many other similarities that are found in Jews and Muslims. I don't find any similarity between the Jews and the Hindus. The Hindus have a caste system, the Jews don't have a caste system. I mean if you go look into the look into the, these sort of religious details and you go on, you won't find even a single similarity between the Jews and the Hindus. So why is it that India is making deals with Israel or Israel is making deals with India, vice versa? If you look at the history I am not against any country, but what I am trying to tell you is India was in the Russian bloc. I mean the nature doesn't change. When they saw that they want to go into the US bloc, they just abruptly left USSR, which is which was Russia, and went into the US bloc. Tomorrow, if some other world power comes up, the Indians won't hesitate for a second to move towards them. They will not go on with US, they will just quickly move towards that. Because it is their psyche, it is in their blood, the RSS and Modi regime, which is a criminal regime. I mean, you look how they treat the minorities in India, you will have a fair bit of idea how things are moving in India. Not only that, they have a psyche, a tendency, they just want to dominate. There is no human right over there. Uh, a population of something like uh, uh, 900 million, they live in poverty, slums and uh, only a very few handful of people, they are in a better position in India. Otherwise, most of the people don't have a toilet over there, they don't have their own houses, they, uh, they either sleep on footpaths or under the uh, bridges, something of that sort. And uh, apart from the Bollywood, in reality, if you look at India, you will have a fair bit of idea what I am trying to say. Why does India want to have agreements with Israel? The reason is that Israel has a lot of high-tech equipment and India wants that high-tech equipment. There is no other reason. They don't have any love for the Jews. They don't have any uh, affection for the Jews or they don't admire your religion, Jewish religion. Uh, there is nothing in common in between you. As I have just mentioned, there is some some similarities between Islam and Judaism, but there is isn't none, there is none between Hinduism and the Jews. You believe in one God like us, they don't believe in God, they believe in so many multiple goddesses. And uh, it's not only a matter of religion, it's how the people conceive the other country. I mean, uh, if you look uh, look back into something like uh, the psyche of the Indian governments, you will very easily identify that they, they are the opportunist people. Whenever they find an opportunity, they just jump over to that opportunity and try to go there. So making deal with India, especially talking with Israel with reference to a military deals or civilian deals, that won't be, uh, give you anything. You won't get achieve anything out of it. I mean, Israel won't get any benefit out of it. The deal should be, uh, I mean, profitable for both the or for both the countries. But uh, over here, I don't see that. I don't see any sort of uh, benefit for the Israelis. The human rights or other things, 
they are pretty bleak in India. And uh, if you are trying to tell me that uh, a military collaboration between Israel and India would change the things, I really doubt it. I mean, you have yourself seen so many countries, NATO forces, US, they had been in war for two decades in Afghanistan and what did they achieve out of it? Wars, do they get any answer? You can, you have a better answer than me. I mean, what happened in Vietnam and what happened in, uh, to USSR. So wars are never a solution. I mean, uh, the humanity comes first and uh, this is where people should love each other. There should not be a clash of religion. There should not be a clash of uh, culture. Uh, people anywhere in the world should be respected and uh, they should be given a chance to prosper. This is uh, one thing I really like about USA because in US, irrespective of your color, caste or whatever, you get an opportunity to improve yourself and if you are capable enough, you can come up. This is something the environment that they have put in place in over there that gives an opportunity to everybody to come up to a certain uh, level wherever they can come up to. Coming back to my topic, Israel and uh, India collaboration, military collaboration. If they think they are doing it against China, I really doubt it. If they think they are doing it against Pakistan, again, they are pretty wrong. Uh, if uh, India is thinking that they are going to help uh, Israel in any way, I really doubt India can't help Israel in any way. They don't have that sort of technology. They don't have that sort of uh, vision over there. So they can't help. So that is our question. These are the sort of things that uh, both these nations have to think about it. And the region should also think about it. What is the outcome of the cooperation or partnership between Israel and India? Israel, I mean, uh, has all the right to go have, go into any sort of agreement with India. India has, as a sovereign country, right to go into an agreement venture, any sort of venture with Israel. But uh, I mean, this should be something where uh, the human rights should be considered as a priority which I have not been considered in India and uh, apart from that, th this should bring prosperity to the people. If it is bringing the prosperity, this agreement, these sort of uh, ventures are bringing any uh, prosperity to the people of India, then it's very good. The people of India should flourish, they should have an opportunity, growth opportunity. If uh, that is happening, I mean everybody can see it, then that's very po good for valid point. But uh, that is not the case. It's not happening like that. India is not, the common people of India, they are not getting anything out of it. They are not getting anything out of this deal. The common people in Israel, they are not getting anything out of it. I mean, uh, what would they get out of uh, an agreement with India, a military agreement with India, when they have to sell everything to India. India cannot sell any high-tech equipment to them because it, India is dependent on US and Israel. Previously, it was dependent on uh, USSR. Uh, Russia, so now it is dependent on these countries. My point is that uh, I mean, uh, uh, opportunities should be there. Every country has the right to go into some sort of agreements, ventures with other country. But then, what I am trying to say is uh, there should be a reciprocal benefit for both the countries or for the region. So I don't foresee that as well. This probably is the reason I am looking forward. I don't foresee this partnership would go a very long way because uh, this is one way traffic. And uh, usually in these sort of conditions, a country which is supplying arms to the other country is interested in getting money by supplying the arms and the country which is getting the arms is interested to get the arms high tech equipment just for the sake of getting the equipment and uh, with the uh, fastly rapidly changing this uh, technological environment uh, equipment of today will be obsolete in about four or five years time the new technology will come over new things will come over again the new ventures will come over 
so things will change this is something uh, both the countries need to consider and especially i am talking with reference to india india should think about its people their prosperity it has a huge population which is living in slums which is living on footpaths which is living in, under the uh, bridges traffic bridges so this is something india needs to see uh, it won't take india any further any uh, on to the upper trend by purchasing these equipment or getting into these sort of uh, i would say uh, irrational ventures but anyway it's their choice it's their call whatever they want to do uh, uh, israel should uh, really consider these things before going into ventures i mean what are the similarities between uh, jews and the hindus this is very important so they will come to know the common people of israel will come to know why to go into these sort of ventures with india uh, when they had have totally a different concept of uh, religion something uh, both can correlate to each other thank you for watching today's video see you in the next video till then it's bye bye